Hello, my name is Liam. I'm a Camilleroy artist and I work at the Art Gallery of New South Wales as an Indigenous Programs Assistant. I'd like to welcome you to the first of three videos where we will look at the work of Wiradjuri and Camilleroy artist Michael Riley. These videos are part of the program Home, Aboriginal Art from New South Wales. Michael Riley was born in his father's Wiradjuri country in 1960. He grew up on the Talbragar Aboriginal Reserve on the outskirts of Dubbo in New South Wales. Michael loved taking photos and as a teenager he bought a cheap Kodak camera and a home photo developing kit and pursued his passion for photography. After moving to Sydney, Michael enrolled in a photography course at Sydney College of the Arts at Sydney University. From here on he began his career as an artist using the processes of photography and film he was included in the historic NADOC 86 exhibition of Aboriginal and Islander photographers. This was the first exhibition of Indigenous photographers. It also included other important artists such as Brenda L. Croft and Mervyn Bishop. Let's have a look at some of their work. This photograph by Mervyn Bishop is called Girl Paws Tea, Burnt Bridge. It was taken in 1988 as part of a project Mervyn worked on to show Aboriginal people and communities in Australia in the year of the bicentenary. This photograph by Brenda L. Croft is called Mary Mumbula and Murray Craigie and shows Brenda's friend Mary with her child. This is one of Michael Riley's early photographic works from 1985 and is titled Maria. Here, Maria, Michael's cousin, looks directly at the camera. This photo was important as it showed Maria, an Aboriginal woman, as dignified and strong, looking calmly and comfortably at the camera. In the past, Aboriginal people were often photographed by non-Aboriginal people as a way of collecting information and keeping control. Maybe, in this case, it was because Maria knew Michael well that she looked so comfortable. For Michael, it was important to use photography as a way of showing the sophistication and beauty of people in his community, and to give people an opportunity to express themselves in the way that they chose. How do you feel when you are photographed by someone you know well? Is it different when a stranger takes a photo of you? Most of Michael Riley's photographic artworks were made using film or analog photography. Have you ever used analog photography to make an artwork? Analog photography is made using an analog camera and film. A roll of black and white or colour film is loaded into the camera. When you take a photograph, light interacts with the chemicals in the film and an image is recorded. You can't see the images until the film has been processed in chemicals, then printed onto paper. That's probably very different to how you're used to taking photographs. Today, you can take lots of photographs on a digital camera or smartphone. Select the images you like best and then delete the rest. Throughout Michael's career, family and friends and community and country were very important sources of inspiration for his artwork. He would make annual trips between Dubbo in his father's Wiradjuri country and Moree in his mother's Camilleroy country, visiting his family and community in each place. Here is one of Michael's photos inspired by his close family and friends in Moree. It's called Nenny Wright and Dog from the series A Common Place, Portraits of Moree Murrays. Let's take a close look at the photograph. How would you describe Nenny Wright's pose? Does she seem comfortable? Nervous? Relaxed? What makes you think this? Let's take a closer look at the details. Is the image black and white or colour? Are the details clear or do they look a little bit grainy? And why do you think this is? It looks a little bit grainy because chemicals in different types of film create different effects in the image. Here, you can see that Michael has used different film to create a different photographic effect. 
This work is inspired by Michael's passion for community and country. It's called Untitled and is from the series Fly Blown. It's very different to the last work, don't you think? What differences do you notice in this work? Is it black and white or color? Can you see the details in the feathers and the dirt? Why do you think Michael has decided to use color film instead of black and white in this case? Why do you think Michael has decided not to photograph people instead choosing to photograph a dead galah against dry dirt? Symbols play an important part in this work. They allow Michael to talk about the relationship between his Aboriginal identity and Catholic upbringing. A symbol is a thing or object that represents or stands for something else. For example, look at this photograph, also called Untitled, and also from the series Fly Blown. Do you know the symbol that Michael has used here? Can you think of any symbols that could represent you or your family and friends? Would you like to have a go at creating your own photographs using personal symbols? so that you're prepared, start collecting objects that symbolize you or your family or your friends. Next, we'll look more closely at the series called Flyblown to see how Michael Riley has used symbols to tell these stories. I'll see you then.